Next into the den is 25-year-old Tim Smith from Manchester. He's looking for an investment of £300,000 in his family-owned footwear business. But can he convince the Dragons to part with more money than they've ever invested before? Hello Dragons, my name is Tim Smith. Today I'm looking for an investment of £300,000 for 10% equity. Redfoot Shoes was launched in 2007 to create and develop innovative yet stylish footwear. The first product is the ladies folding rain boot. This is a fully waterproof fleece lined boot which when folded up It's extremely compact and when it unfolds, it regains its shape so it easily st stands up. Another product that we're known for is a ladies folding shoe. Ours is a patented split sole shoe that fits into its own pouch which then can be easily carried in a ladies handbag. We've developed it with a podiatrist so it's extremely comfortable on the foot. We're constantly inventing and this year we're on target to achieve £2 million in sales with a net profit of £400,000. We're looking to the Dragons to provide added value as well as a cash investment. Thank you for listening to my pitch and if you've got any questions I'll be happy to, happy to answer them. A faultless pitch from Lancastrian shoe manufacturer Tim Smith which he hopes will come in handy as he's asking for a £300,000 investment. In return, 10% of his established footwear company is on offer. Deborah Meaden looks impressed. Hi, I'm Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Um, so far, so good. It all sounds very interesting. On track for a turnover of £2 million this year. That's right. Can I actually see one? Sure. Maybe I'll get it in the construction. Tim, can I have a boot as well? Yes, you? Can I have a shoe tin, please? There you go. Sorry. So the main difference, I get it now, is that you've got a solid sole, so it's actually a proper shoe. That's right. As opposed to a very soft, slippery yeah. type thing. The, I mean, at the minute, there's nothing else on the market which has that split sole. I'm and about also... to test it out. Oh, that's great. <laughs> In terms of your... Um, sales mix where are you finding the interest is uh well the fold the folding shoe because we've had that's in more stores and we've had more interest with that um the folding welly has been received really really well with the retailers that we're in now um i mean viva la diva online and then it's the 415 independents in europe uh, benetton have actually uh, placed an order of um 10,000 pairs of the boot with 20,000 pairs of the folding shoe as well. But they cost less to make than the folding shoes. These cost yeah. less to make? Yeah. So your margin's higher and Much higher, these. yeah. The folding shoes, they cost £10 to make, selling for 15 the average price, and the boots cost £6 to make, and we sell them £20. Confident and composed, it's a good start for the young entrepreneur. Duncan Bannatyne wants to drill down into the business itself. Okay, Tim. Can you tell me you've been operating since 2007? Yeah. What your turnover and profit has been over that, those three years? So 2007, 150,000. Yep. 2008, 500,000. 2009, 1 million. 2010, 1.3 million. Net profits, we made a loss of 80,000. Made it easier, yep. Yep. A loss of 20,000. Yep. Profit of 80,000. Yep. And then a profit last year of 160,000. What's your projection for 2011? Uh, 400,000 net profit. Explain to me why that's going to jump up from 160 to 400,000. Uh, because of the sales pipeline that we've got this year. We've got just under 100,000 pairs forecasted for the end of this year, which we're going to sell. Uh, Tim, yeah. hello, I'm Theo. Uh, hi, Theo. Um, what's the background? Who owns the business? Yeah. How did you get here? 
Right. We've got three businesses. I, I work, run Redfoot and I work full time, 24 7 on Redfoot. Okay. Um, and my father has uh, got a made to order footwear business, the Bake Up Shoe Company. Okay. It's high volume, low margin um, stock, and he's, he's run that. What's the other business? It's a warehousing business. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So, so the three businesses are owned by? Uh, well, the three businesses are owned by a holding company. Okay. Called Train Track. Train Track? Yeah. Go on. And Train Track's owned by uh, my brother, myself, and my father. My brother and myself own 45%, and my father owns 10%. How are you going to do the deal here? You're asking us to you... invest in the subsidiary? In Redfoot. And one last question. Yeah. The Bake Up uh, Shoe Company. Yeah. How much does that turn over? Last year it turned over just under 10 million. 10 million. Yeah. And made a profit of? It made a loss of 60,000 pounds. But it's on track this year to make a profit. Did it make a profit the previous year? No, it made a loss. And the previous year? Uh, the previous year it uh, made, it made a loss. I've got to just stress, on the made-to-order business, it had been making a profit up to 2008. 60% of its business was Woolworths. And when they went bust, um, we had to very quickly get 60% more new business. Openness and honesty is a must if you want a dragon to invest. But will the company's chequered financial history prove a concern for Peter Jones? Firstly, on the business and the pitch and everything, I'd say congratulations. Absolutely first class. Yeah. But I think by asking for £300,000 and valuing your business at £3 million, it causes an issue. But say that we do £200,000 in net profit this year, not £400,000, and you work on £200,000 over the next five years. That's a million pounds, then on top of the balance sheet of eight hundred and fifty. You know, that's how I would see a, a valuation at. And I don't think that's a an unrealistic valuation. I would value your business at your net asset value today, yeah. which is about three to four hundred thousand. How do you get to that? Because you have the losses that you've accumulated year to date. The profit that you've done this year mm. is fantastic. You need to have a little bit more historic proof to show that those earnings are sustainable to get a decent valuation. Okay. And I think it's just too punchy to come in at £300,000. Mm. It's not for me and I'm out. Kind words, perhaps, but no cash. And retail magnate Theo Pafitis is now ready to show his hand. Uh, Tim, the thing that strikes me immediately with this product, yeah. I've been a shopkeeper, yeah is that they're brilliantly made. Yeah. You're a growing business, you've done really well. But there's a complicated structural ownership of the business. I it don't is. think it is. Because I Believe you me, if I invested <laughs> in with... I'm not investing with you, I'm investing with your dad and your brother. But it's... The, I Tim, don't, I don't, so I don't understand what you mean with the... In terms of Redfoot, it's owned by... The, the holding Bakers company? Here which would then pull my strings. Why? Because <laughs> they all because, own it. Because yeah. they own you it. You don't own it. Well, I, I own it with my father and my brother. Well, Great. That's, right. that's it. Exactly. <laughs> that's it. I'm going to wish you the best of luck. You've got a decent product. Can it be successful? No reason why it shouldn't be. But I can't invest, so I'm afraid Thank I'm you. out. I, I've got to say, I'm sure that you're going to have a very good future ahead of you. If you were standing here as 100% owner, I think I might take more time to explore all of yeah. that. But I completely agree with Theo. Yeah. Becoming a minority shareholder in a family business would leave me the junior partner, and I'm not going to enjoy that. <laughs> so I've got to tell you, you nearly convinced me, but I oh, won't be investing, you. Tim. I'm out. All right, thanks. Two more dragons walk away from the deal, but Tim still has two investors left. Will the valuation prove a sticking point for Hilary DeVay? 
Um, it's an incredibly competitive market and an incredibly complicated market. And the competition is so fierce that, yeah, if you do get it as a brand, there'll be another one next week mm. that will be equally as good as yours. It's not for me, oh. so therefore, I'm out. Thank you. Tim, you've put a very high value on the company. Yeah. Three million pounds. And you've brought one of the most difficult businesses to make money in, the shoe businesses. Mm. The number of sizes you need, the number of different lanes you need, it's just phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I can't invest, and so for that reason, I'm up. Thank you. The Dragons may have been impressed with his business, but not the investment opportunity. Tim leaves with nothing. I think the, the share structure is difficult to understand. I think my brother and my father, who also own the business, not being here probably um, was, was a negative because obviously they own the business as well. I still think it's a fair valuation, um, but they thought it was too much risk, really, for what I, what, what I was asking for.